Up until this point, we have been focusing on the composition of pure substances, elements and compounds, uh, both ionic compounds and molecular compounds. But mixtures, samples of matter containing two or more substances physically combined, are far more commonly encountered than pure substances. Um, most, of the, most of the substances that you find in nature are mixtures. It's very rare to find a pure substance in nature. Um, and similar to a pure substance, the relative composition of a mixture plays an important role in determining its properties. A cup of coffee with sugar is an example of a solution. So it is a homogeneous mixture. Um, remember, homogeneous means that there is the same amount and the same type of compounds in every different volume of a sample so that the matter is evenly distributed throughout. Um, in a cup of coffee, you have water, which is the solvent, the main component. Uh, and there's some sugar if you add sugar to the coffee. Um, there's caffeine in a cup of coffee. There is some compound that makes the coffee turn brown because caffeine is white and sugar is white and water is clear. So there must be something in there that's brown. Um, there are lots of different molecules, different chemical compounds that are inside of a cup of coffee. And they're all mixed up evenly and distributed evenly. So every sip of coffee that you take from the cup tastes the same. Um, and that's how you can tell one way that you can tell that it's mixed up evenly. So um, solutions, again, solutions are homogeneous mixtures. So they're um, evenly mixed up. So uh, seawater is an example of a solution. There's water and salt and, and many other compounds that are mixed up in seawater. Um, solutions occur frequently in nature. The relative amount of a given solution component is known as its concentration. So again, um, there's two types of substances in a solution. There's a solvent, which is the main component and there is at least one solute, and sometimes there are many solutes, like in a cup of coffee, there would be many solutes. So um, m I think all of the solutions that we're gonna talk about in this course are going to be aqueous solutions. So we'll be talking about solutions where the solvent is water. Um, that's not always true. We can talk about different liquids, um, and different liquids have properties uh, solubility properties that can dissolve certain compounds too. So the a solution does not have to be made of water, but, it, but most of the solutions that we'll talk about in this course are made of water. So the solvent is just the component that is, in, that is there in a greater amount. So it's significantly greater than all other components. And a solute is there usually at a very small amount, or at least less than the solvent. Um, some other terms that are used to describe solutions. Concentrated, when the solute is, uh, has a relatively high, when there's a lot of it, um, relative to the solvent, then we might call that a concentrated solution. Whereas when there's not very much substance in a solution, we might call that a dilute solution. The molarity is the number of moles of solute in exactly one liter of solution. So, um, if we're talking about a glass of water and we are going to stir some salt into the water and make some salt water, um, we can talk about how we can talk about the volume of salt. If we're at home and we scoop some salt, we would we'd probably be measuring it with a teaspoon or something. So that's one way we can measure how much salt I put. I can tell how many liters of, of water I have, or I can fill up a cup, how many cups of water I have and I might use a teaspoon to measure the salt. Um, but if I had a balance, I could measure the grams of salt and say, how, much, how many grams of salt, how many grams of solute am I going to put in this glass of water? And remember, if I know how many grams of solute I have, I can convert that into moles of solute by using the molar mass. So for salt, for example, the chemical formula is NaCl, sodium chloride. So if I look up the mass of sodium and chloride on the periodic table and calculate the molar mass of sodium chloride, then if I measure how many grams of salt that I'm putting in the water, 
I can calculate how many moles of salt I'm putting in the water, how many moles of solute. So the molarity, that's one way that I can keep track of how much solute I'm putting in the solvent. And the, we're in this specific unit, it's the molarity has the moles of solute in the numerator, and you divide by the liters of solution in the denominator. So um, there's lots of different ways that I can talk about how uh, the concentration of a solution. And the concentration is just how much solute there is um, per how much solvent, per unit solvent. So uh, molarity is just one, one unit among many, and we'll talk about some others. Um, and um, when we're talking about solutions, uh, what we'll focus on in this chapter, at least, is just talking about ways that we can try to quantify how much solute is dissolved in the solvent. So here's one example of calculating the molarity. Uh, a 355 milliliter soft drink sample contains 0.133 moles of sucrose, which is sugar. What is the molar concentration of sucrose in the beverage? So um, if we know the moles, remember the molarity is just the moles of solute per liters of solution. So we are given two numbers here. And um, this number has units of moles. So in my molarity, I have moles of solute as the numerator. So um, I can just put this number directly in the numerator of this calculation. So over here, 0.133 moles. Um, for the numer for the denom or excuse me, the denominator, um, the molarity has units of liters of solution. But my units that are given up here are milliliters. So the first thing we would have to do is convert milliliters to liters. And remember, the way to convert uh, a, something within the metric system is to look at our table of prefixes and determine what the unit prefix, what number that um, unit prefix is um, represents. So in this case, when we have ml in the numerator, milliliters, I would put ml in the denominator down here. And um, if I have milliliters in the denominator and I'm trying to convert to liters, then remember, what I'm trying to do is figure out what does this little m represent. So we look that up on our table of prefixes, and we see that little m, milli, corresponds to the prefix multiplier 10 to the negative 3. So m equals 10 to the negative 3. So ml equals 10 to the negative 3l. So um, you'll see in the calculation above, they did this slightly differently. So it's true that um, one milliliter is equal to one one thousandth of a liter, which is what I've written in, in my conversion here. That's the kind of information that you would find on your conversion chart. But it's also true in the conversion that they've given here that 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. So it's either one one thousandth of a liter is a milliliter, or 1,000 milliliters is one liter. So those are, con those are equivalent um, conversion factors. They're saying this two ways of saying the same thing. So um, after we perform the calculation, and we convert milliliters to liters. Milliliters and milliliters will cancel if I have one in the numerator and one in the denom denominator, which will leave me with liters as my unit um, after the calculation. So then we could plug this value into the, denom into the denominator up here, which is exactly what you would get if you did this. So. 0 0.133 moles divided by 0 0.355 liters. I'd be left with this after um, I perform this calculation. So uh, in, my, in the numbers that I'm given, I have 
three significant figures in each of those. So that means I can keep three significant figures in my answer. And I'll look to the first number after the significant figures to determine how I will round if I round up or down. In this case, I'm going to round up because that 6 is greater than 5. Oops. And now, the units that I have after I perform this calculation are moles per liter. Um, and I can leave it as moles per liter. Moles per liter. Or, write this over here actually. Or, I can represent moles per liter as capital M. So capital M equals moles per liter equals molarity. So capital M is the same way as, as saying moles per liter. I'm saying the same thing. So if you are given a number and it says that you have 0 0.2 Two five zero m is the concentration of your solution, then it's also true that it's 0 0.250 moles of solute per liter of solution. So these are these are equivalent. So the capital M is just a way of abbreviating all of this stuff because this would be it's really hard to write all of this all of these letters every time you're trying to use this unit. But it's important to remember that when you see capital M you're talking about moles of solute per liter of solution. Vinegar is another example of a solution. Vinegar contains acetic acid, is the solute, and the solvent is water. Dilution is the process whereby the concentration of a solution is decreased by the addition of solvent. Dilution is a common means of preparing solutions of a desired concentration. So typically we'll make a very concentrated stock solution that has a lot of solute and not very much solvent. And then uh, if, we, if that's made to a precise concentration, then we can dilute that very concentrated, sol that very concentrated solution to create uh, less concentrated solutions and um, eventually get the, uh, a very precise small concentration. If you're trying to weigh um, a very small amount of solute to dissolve into water it's generally hard to especially if you don't have a very precise balance it's very hard to get a very small an accurate amount of a very small amount of substance so it's easier to put 10 times as much it's easy to weigh a big substance and then you put 10 times as much into um, into the solvent and make a very concentrated stock solution and then you can dilute it 10 times to get down to that very small amount that it would have been hard for you to weigh on a balance. That's the idea here with a stock solution. So here's an example of a dilution. The first solution on the left is very concentrated or at least more concentrated than this and you can tell by the color the solute in this case is blue, the solvent is water, and the blue solute, the, the darker the blue color is, the more solute there is per unit of solvent. So in this, there's the same mass, let's say it's 5 grams since they don't tell us, 5 grams of copper nitrate in here, and 5 grams of copper nitrate in here. So there's the same number of particles. Let's say, let's just call that um, 0.1 mole. 
if there's 0.1 mole of copper nitrate particles in here and 0.1 mole of copper nitrate particles in here, then if the difference is that this one has twice as much water as this one, they have the same amount of copper, but this one has twice as much water. So that makes it look twice as, as light it's, or, or half as dark as this one. And if I were to take this solution and put it into another graduated cylinder and add another equal volume of water, it would become even lighter. And that's a, called a serial dilution, where I can take a very concentrated solution that's very dark and continually add water to it to make it lighter and lighter and lighter. It's, be, it's becoming diluted. So we can prepare a solution of a known concentration by uh, determining how many moles I would need in that solution. If I'm trying to uh, prepare a solution with a known molarity, and remember molarity equals moles of solute per liter of solution, and if I know what molarity I need, then I can calculate how many moles of solute I need. And if I know how many moles of solute I need, then I can use the molar mass to convert that to grams. And it's easy to weigh a substance. So I'm trying to make a uh, solution of potassium permanganate. And um, I don't have an instrument in, in the laboratory that I can scoop out a scoop of potassium permanganate and put it on this instrument to tell me how many moles there are. But I do have an instrument that I can scoop out some of this stuff and put it on this instrument and it will tell me how many grams there are and that's called a balance. So if I weigh this substance and I can determine its mass, how many, how many grams there are, then I can um, convert that uh, into moles or in this case, if I know how many moles I need, I can convert that into grams. And that way I have just the right amount of substance to prepare a solution on this side, a solution with just the right number of particles per amount of water. So this is called a volumetric flask. And it's got a little line right here at the top. So I, you put the substance in the volumetric flask and then you put water in the flask and fill it right up to this line. So you see, there's the line right there. And when you do that, then you have exactly 1,000 mils of solution. So if I know exactly how many moles of solute this is, and I have exactly 1,000 mils of solution, then um, I can precisely calculate what the molarity is. And that's one way of representing the concentration of this solution, how much solute there is and how much solvent there is. So the amount of moles in a solution, n, uh, lowercase n, is equal to the molarity times the volume. And this is because molarity equals moles per liter. So if I multiply moles per liter times liters, then that equals moles. So um, little, lowercase n equals mole. If I am talking about a dilution and I'm adding water to this solution, and go back up here, and think about this, this uh, example again. Remember, there's the same amount of copper nitrate in both tubes. Remember, there's the same amount of copper nitrate in both tubes. Um, we were saying it was 0.1 moles, for example. So I have 0.1 moles of copper in here and 0.1 moles of copper in here, copper nitrate. The difference is that I have twice as much water. That's why it looks different. 
but the amount of copper nitrate is the same. In a dilution, there's, um, I'm adding more water, but I'm not taking away particles, even though it looks like there are fewer. I'm just adding more water and I'm, I'm increasing the distance between them. So during a dilution, there is the same amount of moles before and after, N1 and N2. N1 equals the molarity and the volume of the solution before the dilution. And N2 equals the molarity and the volume of the solution after dilution. And it turns out that N1 equals N2 because I'm not changing how much copper nitrate there is if I add water. It's 0.1 moles before and then I add some water and it's still 0.1 moles. So I can use this equation, the dilution equation, to determine what the molarity is after a dilution. Or I can determine um, what the molarity would be of a stock solution if I wanted to make a certain um, a, a, a a solution of a certain concentration, of a lower concentration. So these are a couple of different ways of representing this equation. Um, M1, L1 equals M2, L2. C1, V1 equals C2, V2. Or sometimes M1, V1 equals M2, V2. They all mean the same thing. Concentration times the volume of, one, of the first solution equals the concentration times the volume of the second solution. All right, so here's an example. If 0.85 liters of a 5 molar solution of copper nitrate is diluted to a volume of 1.8 liters by the addition of water, what is the molarity of the diluted solution? So whenever you see a problem like this, you should start to um, circle the numbers and just separate the numbers from the rest of the information. Okay, so this says I have 0.85 liters of a 5 molar solution. So um, I have, they're using C and V here. So C is concentration. So do I have a concentration here? Liters, capital M, which is molarity or molar, and uh, 1.8 liters. So this one is a concentration. Remember, capital M, molarity, that's a concentration. So let's call this C1. I have a concentration, 5.1 molar. We call this labeling our variables. Labeling our, the numbers, the quantities that are given in, in the question. So whenever you're given numbers, the way that you're going to solve problems like this, and there are going to be a lot of problems like this in this class, we're going to have different equations where there are different variables, and we're given a word problem like this that gives you numbers, and you have to plug the numbers into the equation and solve. So in order to know which equation to use, and in order to know which variable you're solving for, you should always start a problem like this by circling the numbers in the word problem and labeling all of those numbers, giving them a letter, it representing them because the, the equations are always going to be represented with letters like this, C V C1 V1 equals C2 V2. Concentration 1 times volume 1 equals concentration 2 times volume 2. So uh, I have C1, and these two values go together. I, this says I have 0 0.850 liters of a 5 molar solution. So these, this is, I have 0.85 liters of a 5 molar solution. So these are, this is one solution. Right? I can imagine my beaker with some stuff in it. It says 0.85 liters and the concentration is 5 molar. So I have to, you have to read the problem and realize that those two values go together. This is liters of this solution. And then it said, if we keep reading, of a 5 molar solution of copper nitrate is diluted to a volume of 1.8 liters by the addition of water. So, so after I've 
added water to it. It's asking what is the molarity of the diluted solution. So I have these two values go together because they're describing the same solution. And then it says it's diluted. So if it's diluted, it's a different solution now. So it's diluted to 1.8 liters. So I have two volumes, 0.85 liters and 1.8 liters. V1 is the one that is connected to the concentration that I called C1. So C1 and V1 have to be talking about the same solution in this case. I can't say that V1 is 1.8 liters because the molarity of the 1.8 liter solution, I don't know what it is. It says I diluted this to a volume of 1.8 liters. What is the molarity of that diluted solution? So I can't say that if volume 1 is 1.8 liters, that concentration 1 is 5 molar because I don't know what the concentration is according to this question. So this process of labeling your information, the information from the question, is not particularly straightforward. It's important to practice this and look at these and, look, and circle all the numbers as a first step. Circle what it's asking you to do, what's the molarity, and then start labeling the, um, the numbers that you're given. So then I have C2 V2. In order to solve the, this equation, I'm going to need to have at least three of these four variables. And if I have three of the four, then I can solve for the fourth. And that's generally how problems in this class are going to work. I'll have an equation that has room for three or four or five variables, some number of variables. And I'll be given information in the question that will fill in all of the blanks except one. And then I rearrange the equation using algebra, and I solve the problem for that last unknown. So in this case, C2 and V2 are what I oh, still have left to label. I still have this that I haven't put anywhere yet. 1.80 liters is a volume. So I'll put that down here, 1.80 liters. What's the concentration of that solution that has a volume of 1.8 liters? Well, I don't know. That's what the question is asking. What's the, what's the concentration of the solution? What's the molarity? So after I label all of the information from the question, this is what I get. C1, V1 are, are known. V2 is known, but C2 is not known. That's my unknown, C2. So I'm going to rearrange this equation. C1, V1 equals C2, V2. I'm going to rearrange this equation and solve for C2. So how would I rearrange this equation and solve for C2 if I'm doing algebra? Well, I have C2 over here on the right. And in order to get it by itself, I have to get rid of V2. Well, how do I move V2 to the other side? Well, if I have something in the numerator and I put something in the denominator, then they'll cancel, right? V2, something on top, on bottom, V2 on top, V2 on bottom. But whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other side of the equation. And after I do that, V2 and V2 cancel from this side. And I get C1, V1 over V2 equals C2. You flip that around. And that's what this is right here. All right, so now I know that I'm solving for C2. I've rearranged the equation in terms of C2. Now I just plug these numbers in. C1 goes here, V1 goes here, V2 goes here. And then I get this equation at the bottom. So after I multiply these numbers together, how do I know what units I have? Well, liters here and liters here cancel. But I have nothing to cancel molarity. So my units are have units of capital M, which is moles per liter. How many sig figs do I have in my answer? Well, I have three sig figs here, 
three sig figs here, three sig figs here. So I should have three sig figs in my answer. 